Sephira Lou and welcome to my channel. Hello guys and welcome to my contribution for the YouTube Artist Collective theme, Masquerade Ball. If you don't know what the YouTube Artist Collective is, we are a group of artist YouTubers who collaborate on a theme every single month. You don't have to be an official member to take part, you can take part in any of the themes and the themes are voted by you guys on the Facebook page. If you want to check out anyone else's videos, I'll leave links to everyone's channels down below so that you can check them out. We have a few new guest artists this time and it's very exciting to see new people's work and see what everyone's take on the same theme is. So, the theme Masquerade Ball. When I think Masquerade Ball, I think of films like Phantom of the Opera, I think of like old stage musicals, I think of like um, wonderful like old style 1940s, 1920s films. I'm thinking like old era with a classic twist. My original plan was to do a huge scene. I wanted to do a massive uh, scene, almost like from Phantom of the Opera, with the masquerade ball, with the expensive looking dresses and everything like that. But unfortunately, um, this theme kind of stuck, uh, snuck up on me. <laughs> I ended up being a lot more busier in the last month than I anticipated, so I just didn't have time to work on the theme the way I wanted to. I am happy with my final results and what I managed to produce, but I know that I could have done much more. And this is just down to time management. If you're new to my channel, um, I really like to do overly detailed pieces for the YouTube Artist Collective. I like to try and push my boundaries each time because I think that um, your best work is produced when you push yourself and do something a little bit more unusual. And due to time constraints, um, I ended up making this piece a lot more simpler um, and easier to manage than I wanted. I ended up having only like two or three days just to actually work on the piece um, just because I've been so busy in the last month um, and decided that I wanted to do a grayscale piece with lots of um, overly detailed line work especially on the fan and the mask and to keep it grayscale with some hints of gold. Um, there are prints available of this up on my Redbubble store which a link will pop up in the top right hand corner as well as links down below and this original piece is for sale if you are interested. So when I think of Masquerade Ball, lots of images of old-timey films, and um, when I say old-timey films, I'm talking about films that were made in like the 1920s, 1930s, 1940s. I really like to do a lot of research and I actually really do like to watch films from um, an older era because sometimes there is something that is classic about it and yes some people may not like them because they are dated but I like that feeling I sometimes really enjoy watching films that seem dated um, because there's something about them um, which especially when it comes to like the grayscale movies I really enjoy watching them um, and that's kind of something I wanted to invoke within this piece. I wanted her to have mystery. I wanted it almost to seem like she's holding a secret. Like see, she is um, almost like a butter social butterfly flitting from place to place and keeping in all the gossip and the secrets. And she's almost like hiding behind this fan. It's almost her safety net. And that's something that I kind of wanted to invoke within this piece. And I think I managed to get that. Um, there are a few parts in here that I would fix, definitely. Um, there are like parts like her mask is a little bit wonky, um, but it's sometimes very hard to get overly detailed uh, pieces from one side to another. And the way that I could have rectified this is I could have actually made the mask as a stencil and then printed it onto them and then gone in and done detail inside. Um, the fan area, there's some parts which are slightly a little bit off. Um, I wish I could have done more detail in her hair in particular. Um, but you know, time constraints and sometimes you don't always see the mistakes until you go back and look back on a piece. And I think that's also very important uh, when it comes to art, is accepting the mistakes that you've made and understanding that sometimes you're not going to have time to work on everything the way that you want to. And learning to know what is your limits within your time constraints and how you can work with it. With this piece in particular, in comparison to my YouTube artist, other YouTube artist collective pieces, I feel like this is much more simpler than what I wanted to work on. 
I had so many ideas for this piece and just not enough time to work on it that it just seemed um, kind of, I don't know, it seemed like I just didn't get to do what I wanted to do. And that's okay. I'm still happy with the work that I managed to produce for it and I'm still happy with what work I got out for this piece. I'm really excited to actually see what everyone else's interpretations of this theme and if you guys actually manage to do something for this theme, oh my gosh, please show me. I'm always so excited to see what other artists produce when we are all working on a similar theme. Which is why I love challenge months such as like Mermaid and Inktober and November, is to see everyone's approaches to the same theme um, or to the same challenge and how they can branch it out and make it their own. It's all very interesting when you think about how the person would react to the piece and how the person interprets that particular theme. So for the, as for the equipment I've used, as always, it's always going to be linked down below, but I've used some Indian ink, drawing ink here, uh, my Unipin fine liners. I use a little bit of the Letraset Pro markers on top just to build up certain areas. Um, I use my Pentel white gel pen. Um, I use a little bit of the Tombow uh, brush pen as well as for the gold finish I ended up using the um, Deco Roller in gold. Uh, the Deco Roller in gold I believe is quite a hard pen to get hold of. I'll, if I fi manage to find it online I'll leave links down below for you guys um, because I do have a lot, a lot of people ask me about these and I have not been able to find them for absolute ages it's one of the most difficult pens i've ever been able to find and it's one of my most favorite gold pens to use i really wanted to use gold foil on this but i hadn't done test pieces for gold foil um i really want to do more work that's just more grayscale because i really like the way that grayscale looks i think sometimes you can invoke something so um, emotional or something so simple just through a grayscale image and you can learn a lot through working with grayscale um, if you are ever struggling on with coloring with a piece I actually highly recommend um, if you ever are thinking about getting markers or if you ever thinking about working with a piece working in grayscale teaches you so much about color value um, and it teaches you so much about um, how the darkness or lightness in a piece can be invoked um, and I do actually do a lot of pieces in grayscale before I do them in colour and the main reason being for this is because it helps you understand how it deep it, even if the colours when you are actually colouring they don't look very similar when you grayscale them you can see how colours stand out against each other and the value of them and it's a trick that a lot of people actually use when it comes to digital painting or when it comes to actually working um, traditionally uh, a lot of people will work in grayscale and then build up the colours on top um, and it's a common trick to use within digital painting and it's something I never used when I did digital work and it's something that I always wanted to use but never got around to it. So I do actually highly recommend working in grayscale because you'll find it can help your work. If you are new to my channel, hello and welcome. Welcome to the art family. Um, I do a lot of videos. I try and do um, two to three a week if I can. Um, sometimes I'm not always successful due to time constraints, but I do post every single Thursday. Um, so if you are interested, please subscribe to my channel. And um, if you want to see more content, that would be awesome as well. Um, going back to the piece, I realized that after I had worked on this piece for so long, um, I just realized I use polychromos in this as well. Um, I realized that after working and building up my dark layers, that I needed to lighten up certain areas to bring up the values a little bit more just so that they weren't blending in too much and that they weren't like going too far into the background of the piece. So I went back in with the white um, polychromos pencil just to make certain areas pop a little bit more, just to soften certain areas that are a little bit too harsh. Um, as you can see like the white gel pen like really makes certain areas pop but I just needed like the softness of the pencil just to bring out those areas and make it look softer. As for the gold um, highlighting, there wasn't really much of a plan when it came to this. Um, I just knew that I needed to make certain areas pop more. I wanted her eyes to really pop 
um, in the mask and add a little bit of like highlighting on the mask just to give it a little bit more detail as well as the fan and give some little bits of like gold here and there. Um, I absolutely love when you uh, when I see like grayscale pieces with like a pop of colour. I think it can bring life to a grayscale piece so much. Um, it's not as simplified as people think when you work in grayscale. You're essentially colouring but without like a massive use of colour. You are setting up in stone what the base would be before you would add colour so to speak. So if I were to add colour onto this I would give her red lips, I would make, keep the mask in black, I would make the fan also in black to match the mask um, with the um, actual bottom of the thing being almost like a yellowy colour and her hair I would love it to be like an auburn colour um, just so that it would really pop with the red lips as well. Um, I think black and red and white is possibly one of my favourite colour schemes to use when it comes to making colours pop. Um, it's just one of the interesting colours that I've ever used. Okay, so coming towards the final bits of the piece, as you can see, I'm just adding some final touches here and there. Please be sure to check out everyone's amazing work that they have done for the collective. Everyone's worked so hard for this theme and everyone's done such an amazing job from like all the little snippets I've seen. Please be sure to check out everyone's channels. I'll leave links down below so that you can check them out. Um, I really enjoyed participating in this theme, even if the final result wasn't something that I was 100% happy with what I did. Um, overall, I had a lot of fun working with a limited palette and really enjoyed my results. There are areas that I would like to go back and fix, but you know, you never know if you don't like something until you try it. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, comment, and maybe if you want to subscribe. And I hope to see you in my next video. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and as always, stay creative.